Hello everyone, Nate Rostin here with the Unique Quick Change Power Pack. Today we're gonna go over how to change out the Quick Change Power Pack from electric to gas or vice versa. So we start with, there's a bolt under each handle. So I, I have this tool that I can use and I already loosen that up. So this bolt comes right out, I'll set aside. And then this one so once we get those two bolts out on the unique control system we have two cables and what one of those cables does is uh, supplies power directly to the controller so that when we turn the machine off we don't lose power to the controller like some of the other machines that we've had. Now we'll notice because of the two, that, that makes this quick change power pack not compatible with other earlier SSQ2 models or SSQ models. Set those aside. Then we have one quick disconnect here, one here. And first, of course, we want to make sure that we disconnect the power supply. It's best to do this with a teammate because this will help you to remove this safely. Now to reinstall this power pack is basically the same that we just did in reverse. Now let's go take a look at the gas power pack inside of an SSQ2. So now, as you can see, we have the gas power pack installed, the same two connectors, the same two bolts, and the same two hydraulic connections here. The only difference is we've got the gas motor, the Briggs & Stratton Vanguard 16 horsepower, which has a few additional features that some might find beneficial. For one, you're able to operate this machine standalone on a job site with power supply directly from the gas motor. You've got control of the machine itself or the speed of the roll former with the throttle. You have your choke here, your oil filler here, your dipstick is on the other side, along with your gas shut off, which is the red knob here. The reason why we point out the gas shut off is because it's very important that when you're operating or when you're transporting the machine and, or storing the machine, we want to turn that gas off and run that completely out of the carburetor so that we don't have the issue of flooding or anything where you're going down the road. Also, there is a tachometer slash hour meter that shows when the machine is not operational what the hours are but most importantly, what the RPMs are when the machine is running. We want you to run this at minimum 2300 RPM, but we would suggest you run it wide open because you're in the business of making money and make panels as faster. So the higher the RPM, the faster your roll former is gonna spit out panels. 